In this lecture, I want to talk real briefly about something called z-scores. And we're going to see these z-scores come up a lot and when we get to later sections when we start talking about uh, probabilities related to continuous random variables that are normally distributed. And then again, when we talk about statistical inference. But for now, what we're going to use z-scores for are to perform uh, relative comparisons of two different data values. Uh, let me set this up with an example. Okay, so consider two teachers, and what I want to consider is two teachers' salaries, okay? So you have Jeff, okay? And Jeff makes $70,000 a year, and then you have Nicole, who makes $60,000 a year. So who is better off just by looking at their income? Okay, you would say, oh, Jeff makes more money, so he, he's better off based on, on his income. However, it might not be a direct, a fair direct comparison because there could be some other variables at play here. Okay, so I'll, let me give you some extra info. Okay, Jeff, he lives in New York City. Nicole, she lives in Albany, New York. So now ask yourself, who's better off? Jeff in New York City making $70,000 a year or Nicole in Albany, New York making $60,000 a year? Well, you, you might see Nicole, right? Like cost of living is a lot cheaper in, in, in um, Albany, so, so her $60,000 would go further. Well, maybe, right? Uh, Jeff makes $10,000 more. Uh, could, you know, is $10,000 enough to, to offset the cost of living? I, I'm not sure. So what we see here is this is an unfair direct comparison. So it's better to compare what we call their relative position to their peers. Okay, so to do this, we need to know the mean and standard deviation for teacher salaries in their locations. And if you look, what we'll say here is uh, the mean teacher salary in New York City is 80,000 with a standard deviation of 20,000. In Albany, it's a mean of 50,000 with a standard deviation of 5,000. So now who is better off? Okay. Well, you might obviously say Nicole, right? Because Nicole makes more than the mean, whereas Jeff makes less than the mean in New York City. But let's put a calculation to this. And this calculation is what's called the standard standardized variable or a z-score. So for any variable x, and in our problem here, this x will be the salary of each teacher. The random variable, or z, the variable z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, which is the variable minus, remember, this is the mean, divided by sigma is the standard deviation. Okay, so for an observed variable x, the corresponding value of the standard variable z is called a z-score of the observation. Um, the term standard score is often used instead of z-score, but in this class, I will always say z-score. And basically what a z-score tells you is how far you are from the mean in terms of the number of standard deviations. Okay, so it's the value, variable value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So let's calculate the z-scores for each. So if you look at Jeff's z-score, it's his salary minus the mean salary divided by the standard deviation. So it's 70,000 minus 80,000 divided by 20,000, which gets you negative 0.5. So he's a half a standard deviation below the mean. Whereas Nicole's z-score, her salary minus the mean divided by the standard deviation in Albany, which is 60,000 minus 50,000 divided by 5,000, she has a z-score of two. So she's two standard deviations above the mean so we see that just here, Nicole is better off because she's further away from the mean than Jeff, okay? All right, let's just do one more quick example here, okay? Um, Mark took a calculus exam and Mark scored a 71. So his X value is a 71 on his, his final exam for calculus. The mean score in calculus was a 76 and his standard deviation was five. But then you have someone called Steve, and he took an economics final exam, and he got a 75. So he scored higher on his seven on his final than Mark. But the mean score on the economics final exam was an 88, with the standard deviation of 10. So let's calculate their z-scores. The z-score for Mark here, it's the x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. In this case, it's 71 minus 76 divided by 5. It's you minus 5 divided by 5. So he's one standard deviation below the mean. Now the z-score for Steve, again, it's x minus the mean 
divided by the standard deviation. In this case, it's 75 minus 88 divided by 10. This gets you minus 13 over 10, or minus 1.3. So he's further away. So Mark here did relatively better. All right, class, so we'll use these z-scores just for relative comparisons initially, but then we'll, they're going to come up a lot later, so, so keep them handy.